This is Building a Blog with Rails 5 and Bootstrap 4, Part 11. This episode is going to be a little bit different. I've been looking through the site and I'm feeling like uh, it's time to update the design a little bit because it's not feeling as professional as I would like it to. So with that said, um, the end target is not as clearly defined as some of the other episodes where we want to say add some kind of functionality like comments or tags. Um, it's really a little bit more vague in the sense that we just want to improve the design. Now that said, I have a couple of processes that I tend to follow um, for this sort of thing um, because you can't just wander around forever and that's not what we want to do. Um, if you want to get that sort of stuff emailed to you, different processes that I use to do different things like this, um, go to techmaker.tv and sign up. and. Um, working on getting uh, weekly emails sent out with uh, new episodes available and um, extra content like that. So if you're interested in that, go there and sign up. Um, today, what I, what I tend to do is, you know, some people will make in-depth mock-ups. That's great, and, um, and I'm all for that, and I do that sometimes. Other times, I go through an existing site, I will just make a list of notes um, about things that I think could be improved, but I don't exactly detail it because I like to see it in the browser. And that's what I'm doing today. Quick side note, this little process has actually gotten me uh, a number of freelancing jobs because if you can go through and figure out you know, what things bother you about a site, make a checklist, and get some suggestions about what you might do to improve it, uh, that can be very valuable to people and that's actually something you know you could go find a startup in San Francisco on the internet for instance detail uh, go through their website create a detailed list of things that you think could be better and why you think it matters and then just send it to one of the founders you know don't ask for a lot of favors or anything just send that to the founders and say hey you know I made some notes and then just see what happens you know like you'll be surprised anyway let's go ahead and dive in so the first thing I think I want to do is just get rid of this button. Um, let's see. Okay, now it looks like my heights work a little bit better. I can still get to the post by clicking on the title. I'd like to be able to get to the post by clicking on the image. And to do that, I need to do something a little bit different. So we need to say link to post do. So what this is gonna do is anything I put in between here becomes a link. So if I put this card topper, let's see what this does. So now if I hover over that, obviously I can click and that takes me there. Um, I thought about wrapping this whole thing in a link, but since you have these other tags inside it, it's like having a link inside a link, and I think that gets a little weird. Um, the only other thing I was thinking is maybe you can make this a link. Let's see what that would do. So if I just do um, link to post do. Okay, so that works. Obviously, we want to change this up because we don't, you know, we don't need a whole paragraph of blue text. So let's go take a look at our post CSS. So the first thing I notice off the bat is we don't have a BTN read anymore. We deleted that, so let's take that away. No changes. Now, what did, so we have this paragraph card text. So here, let's just do color black for now, just to get rid of the blue. Okay, now we're getting back to basically how we were. Um, I wanna take away the border at the bottom of the card. 
Okay, dokey. Now the next thing. Now this is starting to look really empty. I want to make the background of the card white. And I want to change the background color of the body. So uh, we need to open up a different style sheet. Let's see, what would be the most appropriate thing to do here? We could create one called base. And then this is going to contain some just kind of fundamental things. And we want to import it pretty much right after we import Bootstrap because it's um, going to be, I mean, it's the base. So in here we can say body, background, color, and we'll just give it like a light gray for now or something. This is going to make our nav bar look washed out. Um, that's too weird. Maybe like a FA, FA. Mm, we need to get some colors. So there's a cool tool that I found the other day. Uh, material palette, I believe it's called, yeah. Now this is a tool that is made for um, working with um, material design, which if you're not familiar with material design, uh, it's Google's design framework that they made. Now this, um, you choose a couple colors and they give you a palette based on what it would be for material design. Um, so, What's really cool is you can download SAS and it goes ahead and gives you a file um, for uh, you know, the colors that you want. So off screen I went ahead and copied that file into my project and I ended up with this colors copy. Um, I, already, I already had a colors CSS, so I'm going to delete this colors copy. And we're going to just paste it into this colors file. Actually, I probably should not delete my light gray variable because it's probably being used somewhere. Okay. So let's play with this and see how this goes. So. I'm gonna, now that I realized I have a light gray, I have no idea how it's gonna interact with the colors I just downloaded, but I'm gonna just start by making this background light gray. Oh, it doesn't like that. And that is because in here, colors, so I was wrong, I think I should put base below colors. Invalid CSS after, okay, so I need to make, um, they, when you download the SAS file, they give it to you in pure SAS, but this is SCSS, so you have to follow some regular CSS rules. Let's see if this fixes our problem. It does, and that background color is a little bit better for making the post stand out and it totally fades out the, the nav bar which it's kind of not a terrible look but that's not what we're going to keep okay so let's jump back to the code um i want to try something uh so let's just see if i set the background color on the nav bar here to be that primary color let's see what that looks like I think that's kind of a cool color. Um, I wonder what the dark looks like. A little darker, obviously. Okay. Um, the nav bar brand. Let's see this. So, what are, what are the colors we have? We have accent color. And 
then maybe we can make that white. They call the primary color text. That's white, so let's set that like that. See what that looks like. That's kind of cool. And then the um, we should be able to just set this like uh, the links in the nav bar to be white also. Nope, that did not work. What is what is this? Nav item, nav link, am I doing something with that? No, no, okay, let's say, um, let's actually set this to the primary color light. Let's see what that looks like. Why is that not changing? You have find for nav link. So it's just mine. Okay, I don't have time for this right now, so let's try that. Do something terrible. Um, okay, so now they're all that blue color, and then in here we can say, um, what is the class that gets applied to the active one? Is it just active? So we can say and.active color white or actually a uh, primary color text important that sucks we don't want to do that normally but right now that's what I'm doing okay so to me this is looking quite a bit cooler but there's one thing I want to change right now um, which is first off we don't need that anymore I found this, uh, so this is in the Bootstrap docs, which um, if you didn't notice, the so we're using these alpha versions, which are subject to change. So I think they're on alpha 6 now, and our version that we have in our code base is alpha 3. So if you want to update at some point, um, or if you, didn't, if you just use the gem without specifying the version, you may have already noticed some things are broken. At any rate, this works right now. Um, but you may run into some problems if you start just copying and pasting other code. That was my point. Anyway, um, I want to put some of these extra author-related links in a dropdown. So if you just copy that and paste it, um, this, I think, can just be a pound sign. Um, for now, We'll just call this author, and then uh, just cut and paste these links here. Um, and these need to be uh, drop down item. All right, same thing with log out. And let's see what this looks like. And I can just ax those. Oh, that's not my page. Okay, so author, and then we can do my post and log out. That's kind of funky that it's off to the side like that. I would like it to be kind of more maybe the other way. Um, The other thing I'm going to do while I'm here is I'm going to just copy this and I'm going to make an, 
a link to a page that we're going to build in the future. This is a placeholder so that I don't forget that we're doing this. Um, I don't know what, I don't remember what that yield author is doing off the top of my head. Um, oh, maybe that's actually the active, right? So that needs to probably go up here in the class on this. That needs to be done like that. And let's see what this looks like. <clears throat> so if I visit my posts, hmm, so that's not getting an active class. Am I understanding this right? Okay, so I put the class in the wrong spot. Okay, so now it's getting an active class. Okay, cool. Everything works as we would like. All right, moving on. So the next thing I want to take care of is when we click into a post, it's not quite centered, first of all. So let's take care of that. That's an easy one. Um, so we just need to open up. Let me close some files here. Uh, post show. Where are we? So it looks like my offsets are not working. So I'm wondering what's up with that. So if I go back here and I check the grid layout, this might be complicated to fix if um, the versions aren't the same anymore because I know they've been changing up some of the syntax. Um, just find offset. Offset SM2. What do I have over here? Hmm. Let's try. Um, interesting. So honestly, I don't know exactly what the syntax for this is, and I could sit here and search for it, or I could do something like this. I can just put a div of col md2 co actually I want one, and then col lg2 because those are the offset levels and then I can take away my offsets. So, I mean, that's basically what an offset does in the first place. Let's just see what happens. Refresh the wrong page again. And now that puts me right in the middle. So the last thing that I want to do is grab a couple of new fonts. Um, and I already kind of looked through and picked a couple. Um, just want to make a couple of small points. Like if you look at different sites around, you'll see that people always use, not always, a lot of times blog type sites will use a combination of serif and sans serif, which is pretty much what I want to do here. So I want to grab this Montserrat for my um, uh, sans serif. And then um, I'm thinking about Merriweather for my serif font. So if I go to my two families selected and I customize these things, um, Merriweather, I probably want a bold and I probably want a regular italic, and that's probably it. Montserrat, I'm going to want a light and a bold. And let's stick there. It's telling me that's going to be a slow load time. Um, we'll see. Um, okay, so I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put it in my blog.html layout file. 
So just above the style sheet tag, I just want to bring those in. And then here, it's telling me how I can call these things. So back in my base file. So what I want to do is I want to make my headlines. I want to make them the uh, sans serif font. So uh, which is that Montserrat. And then I want to make my paragraph tags this font family. And in both cases, I have a, a color um, that is primary text color that I want to use instead of black. Um, so we'll, I guess actually what we probably want to do so that we're not repeating ourselves is do like H1, H2, H3, H4. We have one that applies to everything. All right, let's see what we get with this. Okay, so that's kind of funny. So when you hover, it turns black now. Okie dokie, that's... But why is this not changing? That is a question. Hmm. Why is that getting Lato? It's probably because of something from the text editor. What happens if I do that? Nothing. Hmm. So we can see what's going on here back in my post. If I look at this one, it's because I pasted that in. Uh, where is the font? I may not have the font option even in here. Um, I think if we were to just type something, this probably wouldn't be a problem. just save it and we'll see um, yeah so that's kind of weird okay so I see that uh, basically that's happening because we let people I mean people can paste things into uh, the text editor and what I'm going to do is just force that we always use our Meriwether font. Um, because this is, you know, we're not even providing a font option. So if you pay something in from somewhere else, it's going to take on uh, the way that that um, widget works is it's going to try to take on the styling of whatever you pasted. And this way we can kind of force a uniform look, no matter if somebody pastes something from some other site or whatever. I don't know why this is taking so long to load. What's happening? Let's check the server. Um, says it's completed okay. All right. So I am not going to lie. I do not like the way this looks right now. What is the problem? So I feel like that doesn't look like Meriwether to me. It looks just like Serif. Maybe it was. Hmm. So, first of all, um, so I'm kind of doing some stuff here that you probably wouldn't normally do, but we have a very limited set of styles. So, um, going to make all of my headlines bold. Let's see how that looks. Man, that's slow right now. Maybe it is slow from loading the fonts. 
Maybe my Wi-Fi is just crapping out. That's too slow to be the fonts. Okay, so finally loaded, and that's a little bit better, maybe. Um, I think I'm gonna just actually limit that bold to just H1 tags. And then I'm going to actually say that H3 tags are gonna get a color of um, secondary text color. And then back in my show, I'm gonna change this to an H3. And we'll see what that looks like eventually. Let's check out the server again here. Yeah, it's something else that's taken forever. Let's check the Something it's going haywire in here. Okay, so that's looking slightly better. Um, I think that H3 is probably too big, um, which I could, you know, maybe we'll switch that to an H5, 4 maybe, and then do a font weight light. Um, and then I just need to go back in here and make this an H4 now. If it will load eventually. Um, then the last thing that I need to do um, on this is get that font bigger because that the Meriwether is just way too small. I'll uh, pause this so you don't have to just sit here and watch this spin, and I'm going to try to fix my internet. Okay, so it seems like we're back. Um, I'm going to change this to an H6. I want it to be quite a bit smaller. And I want to make this, so this needs to be an H6. And this needs to say 300, because that's the actual number we were importing. Let's see what that looks like. Something did not save. Okay, now that's starting to actually look good. Um, the next thing I need to do is set my P tags to have a much bigger font size. Awesome, okay, so um, it's starting to get there, I would say. Um, still not my favorite thing I've ever seen. I'm gonna go get the, some more of that lorem ipsum, hipsum text. Just copy the first paragraph and I'm gonna replace my uh, content with this and make sure that my pasting style that I was talking about earlier works. So if I just paste in, so you get this font back, if I save it, um, go back to the home page, and we get the nice uh, styling here. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about this yet. I'm gonna have to let it grow on me or not grow on me maybe. Um, I definitely want that to be bold. And I definitely do not want that to be that font because that looks really crazy. Um, that needs to be uh, probably not sans serif or serif rather. Uh, so let's go back to our underscore post. So to start, um, let's make this. 
and uh, let's go back to base um, H1 card title. So we have that. Then these tags should be. We can just add a class of tags. Then we want to put that uh, here. And let's see. Publish date, we can make this an H6 probably. That may be too big, we'll see. Let's just see what it looks like. It's better except for that didn't take. Um, let's check that out. Okay. Take this tags away here, and we'll see what this looks like. Okay, I think that's much better. I want those to be smaller, and we're going to work on the styling of that. I don't want that to have an underline. Um, I'm just going to wrap those couple things up, and um, we'll call that a day. It might be too small. Yeah, it's too small. Maybe not. Let's see. Um, what's the margin on the bottom of this thing? And then what's the margin on the top of those? Okay, so I want to say uh, card title margin bottom zero. The last thing that I wanted to do was back in my post CSS file. Um, we want to say um, text decoration none. Let's see if that gets rid of this underline. No, I may need to specify that it's an A tag. Card text. No, I need to. Hmm. So I'm in the card block. That's going to be weird. You know what? I'm just not going to worry about that right now. That's not the end of the world. That margin did not stick. Make sure I saved it. Yep, what's going on here? Host index. so I apparently defined it a conflicting style. So I'm kind of getting myself in trouble by working on um, putting some of this stuff in the wrong place, I think. I need to get rid of this card title here. This really goes in post index. Um, yeah, let me make this zero. Um, and then 
where our do we have anything about tags in here? Probably not. Um, let's see what this does. I should pull that up nicely. It's looking a little bit better, and then we can look at. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take this and move it because that really doesn't go here. And we'll put it right there. Okay, so I think this is getting better. There's several things I still don't like. I don't like this. Um, this doesn't match at all yet for the pagination. Um, still not 100% sold on the font situation. Um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up and push it up so you can pull it down and you can make your own adjustments to it. Um, if I change anything in the future, um, I'll just push that up to GitHub so you can pull it down and, and compare it to yours. At any rate, uh, thanks for watching. That's it for this episode. In the next one, we will be setting up a account page for our authors, and then we will be deploying this to Heroku in the episode after that. Uh, I'll talk to you next time.